So you can still use the Inigo Montoya stuff. So let's start over again. All right. You ever see Fishtails? Is that the name of that? Fishtails? No, 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 no. no. The, you know the one where the sharks and, and the fish get along and it's like not supposed to happen. And the shark is like a Robert De Niro. I have no idea. Shark Tales. Shark Tales. Yep. Nope, never no. seen that. Really? Is it a show? No, it was an animated show. I mean, not animated My show. My kids might have watched movie. it then. Yeah. It was pretty good. They have like their, they wash the whales and they sing, Working at the car wash. Huh? Hey, y'all. Eli with Alchemy Custom Weaponry here, and I'm here with Nick. Who of works Cabot for, Guns. Yep, Cabot and Alchemy. Yes. And Cabot uh, is the parent company of Alchemy, mm -hmm. and so you are my parent. That parent, is how parent. That, yeah, that's it how feels like it. <laughs> it feels. You're old like enough it. to be. Yeah, uh, pretty close. Yeah, I mean, close. I mean, it closer would be. rather than not. Closer. Sure. Yes. Anyway, moving on. So we're going to talk. We got a really special project here. Yes. Most of you know, if, and if not, we'll kind of explain. Um, Alchemy, we do the Resto Mod project. So this is um, now it's going to be four times a year. Twenty-five limited edition guns that are inspired by um, really cool guns that we've seen in history, or just some really cool idea that we have yeah interpretations of things that yes. have, uh, that have been done in the past and it's it's so cool because you know there are guns that were made in the past that were limited to the technology of the time oh, of course and of course. so we're kind of taking those and putting our own spin on them yeah um and you know it, it's just it's cool to be able to do that again so that's what the resto mod series is new mixed with old our take not clones definitely not definitely clones. not clones because yeah, we're we're going to put our own touches on it but yeah that's what we do, and this is the the first one of this year, and it is underneath this uh, red, red sheet sheet cloth. What is? Yeah, yeah. I'll let you do it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it so it doesn't fall off the okay. table. Oh, Boom. Ooh. it's a black gun. It is a black gun. So here we go. This is the first resto mod of 2024, and mm -hmm. officially, let's call this like the new era resto mod. Yes. Now that we know what we're kind of we know what we're yeah we, we, yeah we got you got a good plan for it. So this is. Our take on the famous Musoc pistol. Yes. The Marine Expeditionary Unit Special Operations Com Capable. Yes. Uh, 1911. K that's that's kind of a weird uh, jumble of. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Of, it's a lot of letters. But you know, it's it's so cool when when we were talking about the next resto mod to do after yep. the the original Combat Limited to go into um, when uh, the military started adopting customization to pistols. And it's so cool because they, they started, um, you know, producing these guns back, the originals, not these, not, not this Musoc, but they started producing the original Musoc pistols in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And then I, I believe they went all the way up through the early 2000s from modifying uh, 1911A1 lowers with different uppers, different components to customize them. But to see that customization and that upgrading happening in the military side, it really was the beginning of that, and you could, it's funny because you can trace it back to, you know, Colonel Cooper and how he was really revolutionizing the way handguns were perceived, the way shooting styles were, and how that happened with, I forgot what he called it, but Gunsight when he originally opened it in the 70s, how all of a sudden the pistol changed from, you know, the single-handed shooting style to, you know, two hands and a weaver style, and then from there into the 80s, the customization started bleeding over from the commercial market, market into, into the military, the military market. market. So the M45 or the, the MUSOC uh, pistols that were being produced is just such a cool piece of history. Well, and it's cool that this gun's coming after the, you know, uh, essentially our take on the Packmire Combat Special. Yep. Um, so the, the, the first resto mod for Alchemy was the Combat uh, Limited, which is, like I said, our take on the uh, Packmire Combat Special, which is a civilian combat Gun. custom gun yes yes so now our next one is going to take a foray into the the military aspect yep um and one that's fairly iconic uh in itself and so we've done a cool we've done a lot of cool things here with this with this gun um you know and of course let's be honest i mean we're not even trying to toot our own horn it's way freaking better than the original ones were built but that's just because we can it's, it's know, what it we're, is we're putting nicer components we you know we're also charging a lot more than the, <laughs> than the military, than military contract. Of yeah, so I mean, we're not going to get, you know, totally into the weeds on the pistol. There's, you know, different information out there on, you know, how the MUSOC pistols were developed. Um, there's the originals we're using, 1911A1 lowers. Yep. Um, we did keep a lot of that um, variant one style. There yep. was, depending on how you read it, between 
two, four, three, four, five-ish variants. Very which that, weren't that like were military yes. sanctioned variants. Yeah, they were it's, just it's like, interesting. It's kind of like it's kind of are... like the Mark 18, yeah. which is cool, as, that came later on in rifles, where there were different things done depending on the armorers that were doing them, the parts that were available. So this is somewhere in between a variant one and a variant two. So what we did is we took. Uh, we'll just start on the upper here. Uh, so the upper is going to be a traditional style upper. Um, from the variant ones with the vertical cocking serrations. We have our own roll marks that we've put on the side underneath the ejection port here, uh, you know, Alchemy Custom Weaponry USA to kind of represent what the roll marks sort of would have been there. Um, we are keeping the uh, flareless ejection port. It is lowered, but without a flare. And then up in front using a uh, black serrated front sight. Now, the original variant one Mu socks had a pin in front sight that were problematic to say the least. So they did change those throughout the years. This, we have a standard Novak dovetail because that's just the, yeah, what we, what we have. The way that's, we do. Yeah, that's the way we, we do it. Do. Yeah. And then in the back, we have the, the Harrison retro rear, the square notch rear. This is a very cool sight, very cool sight picture. I mean, it just blends in perfectly with this pistol in general. And then moving on to the back, we have what is definitely period correct, maybe not exactly clone correct, but you know, yeah. inspired correct is the, the commander hammer. So Which it does have a commander hammer. ringing. Well, for Eli thinks it's life. the correct, uh, correct hammer in general. <laughs> and then we also, moving down, uh, have a king style ambidextrous thumb safety. Super cool. Super cool. So this is a great ambi safety. It is very, very tactile is oh, the word that I hear all they the time. See, yeah. yeah, you gotta have that tactility. I don't know if that's a word, um, but these are just great. And it's, it's cool to start seeing ambidextrous parts getting into the military too, because that's it really wasn't very often seen. Well, they were way the behind. They were, the they civilian were, market was in the ambi safeties as early as like the 60s. Yeah, but it's like if you were left-handed and in a battle, you're just fucked. Oh, you're... you're yeah, sorry. Be right-handed or be or be wrong. Be wrong. Be wrong, exactly. Now, moving down to the trigger, we're going to talk about the whole frame in just a second. Moving down to the trigger, we have a Videki three-hole style speed trigger. Um, the original variant ones were made with steel triggers that were where the over travel screw was welded in place, <laughs> right. which is which was great because they wanted it to be set it and forget it. Meaning once the armorer set it, that was it. Well, when you have a steel trigger shoe that has a little more mass, there is the ability for some bump firing just because of the extra mass that's there. So they can go full auto and you add that into the, uh, you know, taking that, that uh, uh, set screw and welding that in there so you can't, uh, you know, adjust it that's probably an, an issue. So they did quickly change to a lighter trigger, Videki uh, three-hole speed trigger with the over-travel adjustment screw. On the frame, we have something as a departure for Alchemy Custom Weaponry. Heck we yeah. have the scallops around the trigger guard the just A1 to harken, scallop. the A1 scallops, just to harken back to the A1. And underneath the uh, Packmeyer wraparound grips, we do not have the front strap check ring. So that's gonna be very reminiscent of right. those guns as well. Moving to the back, we do have um, our uh, grip safety that we yes. use with the memory bump because they were using, I believe it was a, a, a Wilson uh, grip safety. The early ones didn't have a memory An bump. early one without a memory bump. Which is, uh, that's a non-starter in 2024. Yeah, I mean, really, yeah, the memory bump, especially for any type of combat shooting where you're using a functional grip safety. You want it. You're going to want it. And then we have a vertical serrated mainspring housing with the lanyard loop. Super sick. Super sick. But there's a couple of small details that really set this gun apart that I think are rad. And uh, why don't you talk about it, the, the markings? Oh, yeah. So one big thing that you saw on a lot of the um, MUSOC pistols, especially like, you know, in pictures and stuff, was that, well, the military just likes stamping things. Stamping things with numbers. Yep. And so we've actually done that on the slide and on the thumb safety as well. And of course, the frame is, is already uh, numbered there. So you'll see the, the stamped, yep. st an actual stamp. Yes, our, our gunsmiths the, are actually stamping yep. it to match the, the serial number on the frame. Correct. And this is not lasered. This is going to be like very old school looking. So uh, they might be crooked. Yeah, well, they, and, have, and they were kind of intentionally done yeah, that way. Because yeah. if you look at the, any MUSOC pistols that you'll see, they're varying depths because it was just done by the armor Correct. to make sure that those parts that were fit go specifically with that gun. Well, and I think it's important to note that where now, you know, people want these because they look cool and they're yeah. cool. At the time, they were they were purpose-built guns. Yep. Like, looking cool really wasn't a part of it. It's just that's the way the cookie crumbles. Sometimes yep. that's how some of the coolest things come to 
uh, to be. And so from there, we have the finish. The finish. This is really cool because the, the finish that we're using on this, we wanted to emulate the finishes of the original Musot guns, but not use a military finish. Park. We, yeah, we didn't want park. We yeah. wanted to use a, a modern finish that um, has you know durability and beauty built in. So this is actually a hard blast DLC. So it is still DLC, but DLC is all about the prep work. Yep. And the way you prep it changes how it looks. So this is a hard blast DLC, which is gonna give you a very parkerized look mm -hmm. where once it kind of dries out, it will be grayish in areas. I mean, if you look at it from a distance, you go, that's, that's a parked gun. But then you come up close and it is much smoother than a parkerized gun. Yeah. And if you add some oil to it, oh, I'm sounding like you. Oh, oil. yeah. I said, oh, I'm spending too much time with them. You add some oil to it, it's gonna blacken right up. So it is just very, very cool. A very cool pistol. But then underneath, it's all alchemy. You all know, alchemy. hand fit hand barrel, fit. Yep, yep, you know, yep. it, like all, all of those components are still there. Um, and it's just a fantastic gun. I'm, I've been very excited about this. It, it's taken a while to get here from all the little details. You'd be amazed at what it takes. Um, so to see it in person uh, gives me, you know, goosebumps. And I'll say, you know, for a lot of the B-roll and stuff, it's going to be hard to, to picture this finish. Um, it, it's going to look very black, but I promise you in person, it's, it's quite breathtaking. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's definitely one of those things where I'm glad that I lost the argument. Um, I definitely was pushing for a park, parked gun because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of autistic about stuff like a that. A little bit. And, you know, you kind of talked me off the ledge and you were like, well, hey, we got to give it a nice, you know, at the price point we offer. Yeah. You know, we got to give it a nice finish. So. I want a DLC gun. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, this is a project, you know, whereas the Combat Limited was something, which is why I'm, I'm not really inter trying to interrupt yeah. you. The Combat Limited was something that that was kind of my baby. This has in turn been your baby. Yes. So, you know, that's I'm. I know that you've even been considering, and I know you're kind of, you know, you don't you don't buy too many guns these days, but even you've considered about buying one of these. Uh, yes, so. yes, that is that is a very exciting gun to see uh, in person. So yeah, it, and it's definitely know. one of those where we we got we got some pictures before we got to see them, mm -hmm. and it was cool. I mean, I was no. like, hell yeah! But then when when I saw it in person, it was one of those where you and I think we're just spending time not letting it go. Yes, yeah, you know, it was definitely. Feels good, looks good. You're going to get all the performance that you expect with Alchemy, but a vintage, you know, aesthetic. Yeah, and I mean, there's so many people, the, the clone market, the traditional clone market has gotten really big. There's so yeah. many people that are looking back at guns of the 80s, guns of the 90s. I mean, I, I have, uh, you know, a, an M1A that I've painted to look, up, look like, you know, Black Hawk Down, the same thing. I've got a Gordon Carbine. I've got a Motto yeah. Mark 18. Yeah, I've got, I've got a Resto Mod, you know, Motto as well. So this is just something to where it, it's cool, it's functional, and it just gives you, I mean, I can't, I can't believe I'm saying it. It gives you a vibe. Got that's that that's vibe. a young person. That's word. a young person word. Young person. But this gun right here, this is a vibe. Absolutely. This, this is a, this is a, you know, a, 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 a MUSOC, you know, Marine out in the day in, you know, 80s, early 90s vibe. This, yeah. no, of course. this is just cool. Yep, so we are super excited to introduce, this is the first Resto Mod of 2024. Four, yes. Four, right, yes, 2024. We have three more coming after this, but of course these, if you know anything about the Resto Mods, these will go fast. So, you know, get prepared. Um, if you're watching this um, before we release them, I think this is probably gonna go out, you know, maybe as, as it's being released, so. Uh, don't hesitate. Don't procrastinate. Yes, as one might say, because this is uh, these these guns always go fast, and people are very upset that they, that they, they don't, don't get, get one. Yes, so, All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We're super excited for this, and we've got some awesome. Uh, I mean, we've got some cool stuff. Coming. Really cool stuff coming. So please stick around, and we appreciate your support here at Alchemy Custom Weaponry. And with that, Kerry Cockton Lock. We'll see you later.